Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of NetApp Insight 2024. We are here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Strecce. Rob, there's been so many new product announcements, product evolutions, rebranding, and this has been that kind of show. Yeah, and it's been great because we've been able to dig in with a lot of customers and partners and people who are, you know, at the rubber meeting the road and using the technology. It's not just about the technology for technology's sake and really it comes back to the customer. Yeah, and how, how they're using it to yes. transform their businesses. So with that, I would love to introduce our next guest, CUBE alum, Jeff Baxter. He is the VP of Product Marketing here at NetApp. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. Oh, Great to have you. thanks for having you. me. I'll show up anytime you call. Okay. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> All right. We thought you'd be floating around, but you I, know. You like... know I, I just, I appear whenever they tell me to show up for a podcast. Or yes, there I you just, go. I apparate. Right there. there. Very nice. <laughs> so I want to start by talking, I love this. You have the six S's. Yes. This is your approach, your strategy. Yes. They are simplicity, savings, security, scalability, sustainability, and smarts. Yes. I love it, I'm a word girl. Yes. So tell me, how did this come about? And, and, and how, why are these priorities so core to NetApp strategy? Yeah, I think it was just a natural growth. It's funny, yeah, some of it is, I mean we freely admit, some of it is marketing and some of it is alliteration because it's fun to say, it's right? Fun, yes. And, and we made it because as our portfolio expanded, right? You know, 30 years ago we sold one storage box, right? And as we've done more and more and more, we wanted to, rather than take a portfolio view that was, we sell this system and this system and this cloud offering and this cloud offering and this support, we wanted to take an offering that's about what can we do for the customer, right? And then the, the six S's are just almost our mnemonic to help us remember it, to help our sales teams and our partners remember it as they're talking about customers and make sure that we're hitting all of them because each one of them we think is important to our customers, right? And so we started off, I mean, 30 years ago with simplicity, right? We added on security, we've added on sustainability over time. More recently, it's been this effort to move into sort of smarts and AI and, and all the things there, right? And, and it just, it, it all kind of flowed, although we are really struggling with seventh and eighth S's. <laughs> um, so if there's viewer suggestions, feel free, but uh, we're kind of running thin on them, I got to say. Yeah, I, I don't know how you spell AI with, with the S, but you know. It took a lot of work. <laughs> um, Smarts is a good way to go yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not supposed to admit that I asked AI how to spell AI with an S and it came yeah. out with Smarts, but no. yeah, well, maybe, they, maybe. Uh, hey, yeah, we'll you know, it's good for, it's definitely good for words and alliteration. Yeah. That is for, for sure. darn sure. Yeah. I, I, for I sure. use it for that. But when you look at the priorities and uh, that the six S's present, what do you feel is kind of the balancing between them? Because mm -hmm. you know, if you push in one place, it's like a balloon, it pops yeah. out somewhere else. So yeah. how do you balance that out? That's a great question. I, I think the nice thing for us is, you know, you hear from us talking all the time about a unified architecture, right? So the nice thing is, we don't have to do as much pick and choosing as you might think, right? We don't have to decide, okay, we're just going to focus on simplicity this week and that means this part of the portfolio suffers or other things like that. It's generally tends to be more of a rising tide that lifts all boats. I will say, Simplicity is always the interesting one because simplicity is, there's a very delicate balance, right? And we've seen that even in the past at NetApp where we turn the simplicity dial too hard and we suddenly lose functionality or make it harder to find functionality that our power users want. And if we keep it too complicated, then all of a sudden we're way too complicated to operate, right? And so finding that right balance is always the, I think that's the most, the biggest balancing act. I don't think anyone will say, hey, you gave us too much savings, right? I don't think we've ever heard that. <laughs> or, or say, hey, your sustainability, you're just, you're, cutting down my carbon emissions way too much, right? That's not usually an issue. So, but generally all of them build on each other, right? Anything we can do to put less footprint in the data center usually costs less money and it usually improves the sustainability footprint and it usually makes your infrastructure simpler, right? So they, they all do tend to work primarily more in harmony as opposed to being uh, disparate forces. So it's a marketing monitor, but it's also a moniker, but it's also a mission, really, yes. for you and your team. What, and I'm sure you're having a lot of conversations with customers here on the show floor and, and elsewhere at this yeah. conference. What are they telling you about the, the biggest challenges that they're facing with their data? Yeah, so I think it, it comes back to, uh, I, I don't want to say it comes back to the S's, but it really, like what I continually hear is everyone wants to cut costs, right? And I think that's just a no-brainer. Um, it's probably true in any era right now, there seems to be very much an era of how do, we, how do we optimize our costs across the board, right? So they want to hear how they can do that on their data, how they can do that on their cloud costs, and, and obviously we have solutions there. Um, security, right? Um, everyone here knows that um, you know, at 2 a.m. at night in Vegas, they get woken up by a phone call, right? And, and that goes from being a really good day at NetApp Insight to being a really bad day back at the home office, right? And so, 
Um, that's one of those sort of existential threats that, that keeps everyone up at night, right? So that's the fear opportunity. And then yeah, they're, they're, um, they're really asking about AI. And a lot of people who are here, we have AI specialists that are here, we have uh, data scientists, we have a lot of people, but we do have a lot of traditional storage architects here, right, and, and storage engineers. And they're curious about how we will impact them and they're also curious about how they can up-level their game, right, and make themselves even more invaluable than they already are and really move up that stack and not, not give up storage infrastructure, but if you can become a data infrastructure architect, you increase your value to your company, you know, and fold, basically. Yeah, I mean, to me, that, that was kind of the key. We've been having conversations and coming out of the keynote this morning, really around the in, you know, data and the intelligent data infrastructure and how it all comes together. I, I think it, there's, it's a cloud operating model is what, mm -hmm. to your point, what they're all looking for. Right. How, how do you see the intelligent data infrastructure really presenting opportunities to those customers going forward? Yeah, so I think you know, we made multiple different announcements about Keystone, we've had rapid growth in Keystone, right? So we see so many of those customers moving to that cloud operating model. I thought Sadeep shared a great stat, which is that we've had 0% attrition, right? So every customer who's tried Keystone has stayed with it, and I don't know what higher endorsement there can be of that yep. as an offering. I mean, that's pretty darn good. I hope we never lose one customer because then instantly the tagline goes, right? It doesn't sound as good to say <laughs> 1%, but yeah. you know, it, it's, it's just been an outstanding success there. So we're continuing to grow that, and that really provides that cloud offering model. And then things like Blue XP, where we have that hybrid control plane so that regardless of where your data is, right, you can operate it like it's in a cloud. And that really is the vision. And you heard Chris share, share a lot of vision about this global metadata namespace, right? So we're, all, we're thinking about even from, a, from another step of how do you make your data like a cloud operating model where all of your data is just unified in a single metadata namespace so you don't have to move all your data together because that's mission impossible, right? Your data is never going to be collapsed into one central data lake. But actually bringing it all together in a place that you can actually have access to it, I think that's going to be, that's going to really be the next generation of sort of cloud operating model taken to a, a data level. Agreed. Yesterday on the main stage, George Kurian made a point to talk about how NetApp is drinking its own Kool-Aid or mm. eating its own dog food, which I find so gross. Yeah. But, or but <laughs> drinking its own champagne. Yes, that's that's a go. nicer touch. That's drinking classy. its own dog food is the worst. Oh, yeah, don't yes, do that. No, no, that would be bad. No. So gross, so gross. <laughs> but, but, but at the same time, it really is important because it's showing that, that NetApp is, is using, is leveraging its own AI to improve, to improve services and systems yeah. for its customers. So yes. can you talk about some examples that you've seen that are, that are most exciting to you? Yeah, so I think you, know, you saw the video yesterday from Mike Berry, right? And, and really it's about, um, he talked about how we unified all our internal data assets, because he's, I, I can only amplify what he said before, because I've, I've had multiple hats in NetApp, right? So I was in product management before, and depending on who you asked and what systems you asked, you got different answers, right? And when you're trying to take customer input and use it to shape our product development, which is what we always try to do, right? Go customer in. If you're getting different answers about your customer data sets, there's no, you're on shifting sand, right? So being able to unify that into one consistent operating model across both our cloud assets and our on-prem assets to really get a picture of what our customers are doing has been outstanding for NetApp to be able to move forward in product development. And so that's just, that's just one example of how we've managed to unify things and really build this cohesive AI-driven business processes. Yeah, I, I think, again, it's about the data. And, yes. and one of the big things that I look at when I'm talking to organizations and one of the, the keys for them is the fact that they're looking at it from a security perspective. And I think that you, you, you have a moniker. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, you know, most secure storage on the planet. Yes. And I, I think when you start to look at, you know, having been here not not 30 years ago, but yeah. you know, you know, almost uh, over 10 years ago now. Yeah. And when there was a lot of uh, government agencies and others that relied on NetApp storage, yes. so it had to be secure from. Yes. And you ha you had some of the announcements today yeah. as well around uh, signing up and things of that yeah. nature. Kind of help us understand how how that really how you got there and what it means to the customers. Yeah. So NetApp, I mean decades ago, right, and, and to this day, the public sector is incredibly important for us. I know at one point we had a data point, we were the number one storage in public sector. I believe it's still to be true. I haven't, I haven't checked recently, but it, it's this incredible focus for us um, because, not just because it's a good business for us, but because it's a good mission, right? And, and supporting, um, and not just the US public sector, by the way, but the public sector everywhere and, and helping them achieve their mission, right, for societal good. Um, and in doing that, right, yes, you get, 
all sorts of penetration testing left and right. You ship your boxes to forts and random deserts and have them tested and have them kicked and have them melted and put on uh, shock and vibe tables, let's just say, right? Like all yeah. sorts of fun stuff. And most of that wasn't directly applicable to the commercial and enterprise until very recently when ransomware and these advanced persistent threats became so commercialized, right? So that you can go on the dark web and buy the same attacks that used to be just the domain of nation states and now apply them to enterprises and commercial businesses, right? And so any script kitty can go out and become an expert hacker and be attacking your business. So we've taken all that expertise we built over those past few decades and applied it directly in the systems that we offer to everyone at no additional cost, right? That's why we keep saying most secure storage on the planet. Um, and yes, I will say that 1,500 times at this conference <laughs> alone. I, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One of the biggest impediments to getting work done is the fact that so much of our work in any organization across any industry is done in silos. Yes. And that is the thing that is crazy making for employees yeah. and for yeah. leaders, but it's also yeah. a real, it's real impediment to having successful outcomes. Yes. How is NetApp enabling customers to be silo busters? Yeah, so it's a great question. I, I love that phrase, right? That's the whole, the way we instantiate sort of the simplicity thing, right? It's, it's be a silo buster, right? And we meet it on silo multiple Silo buster levels. starts with an S, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm saying. But it's yeah. kind of hard there to call it simplicity, but I mean, yeah. we can use it, we can yeah, use okay, it. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll have my people call your people. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the, I think for us it's all about, you know, we started 30 years ago by busting these silos between NFS and SMB, right? The Unix and, and Windows worlds fighting, and then we did SAN and NAS, right? And then we sent to object, and then we extend out to the cloud. So at every step, and I think you heard it clearly from the keynote stage, right? It is on tap, right? It's, it's our architecture that we've been able to instantiate across all of it, and in doing that, really break down these silos. Um, the, the, if I could be so bold, the old architecture of saying we have a SAN team and a NAS team, I understand the merit to it, I understand the reasoning, but it's becoming a little bit dated when what's more important is how can you use that data to drive value for your business, right? And this whole idea of having to have multiple vendors for different things like that, that's not really the point of lock-in anymore, right? Everyone's using open protocols, everyone's using open standards. So if you can optimize on a single architecture, the one who has their data AI ready first is the one who's going to win, right? So building all these different silos for what do you think to be momentary advantage, right, is going to hold businesses back in the long run. And so I think that's, that's super exciting for us to be able to, to unify it and bust down those walls. Yeah, and I, I think again, it has to be there because when you look at AI, AI needs data from everywhere. I mean, it yes. is the light, you can't do AI without data. Where do you see AI being leveraged to improve your own offerings? We heard of mm -hmm. some of that earlier today on, yeah. from the main stage, but where, where do you see it? making yeah. the biggest impacts. So I mean, we certainly have employed AI for auto healing. I think there's always more we can do there. There's always more you can do there. Um, the latest thing that we announced was an anti-ransomware, right? And I think that's going to be a constantly evolving field because we know that AI is being used to design attacks. Yeah. So it has to be used to, to aid in the defense as well. So that's a main thing. And then a lot of the, the things that Krish covered in terms of building this NetApp AI data engine directly into ONTAP, if anything, and there were so many announcements in that hour and a half that it's going to take a while for people to unpack all of them, to be quite honest. Um, and hidden in that one, right, this whole idea of building a NetApp AI data engine is this concept of what if your storage platform was truly a data platform and instead of just providing NFS and SMB and Fiber Channel and so on, what if it provided a vector database as a service, right? So that your storage architect can become a data architect and can have that AI embedded directly within the system so your data scientist can just talk directly to your storage system and bypass seven other data movements and all this other curation. That is exciting, like it lets us jump, uh, you know, light years ahead in terms of bringing this to the enterprise, bringing RAG, bringing inferencing, bringing all the things that are going to be widespread about AI and really democratizing it. Yeah, we, we again, we totally agree because we see that small language models and, you know, fine tuning and grounding of those models that they take, hey, we'll take Llama yeah. and we'll make it our own and yeah. use it for a particular thing. You've had customers up on stage talking about that. I, I think one of the things that you, you hit on it and gonna def I, I talked to Chris earlier today yeah, and I said, I'm definitely going to you know, follow up with him on this whole, the global metadata namespace thing, to yes. me, seems to be a huge direction. Is that, yes. is, is that and even with some of the uh, name changes to some yes. of the products being more data focused, yes. it seems that's kind of the direction oh, that you is. see it going. That is, I mean, we previewed it, when was it, a year ago when we called ourselves the Intelligent Data Infrastructure Company? 
And some of this we knew was coming, actually most of this we knew was coming, and so that was a very thoughtful sort of rebranding of the company with the recognition that yes, we still build infrastructure, we still sell infrastructure, we are happy to sell customer storage systems and we're never getting out of that business, right? And we're happy to sell customers cloud storage. But the real goal is to help them build a data infrastructure out of it and then make it intelligent, right? And, and up level it to being all about making data AI ready. And, and that's really what we find exciting about you know, the next 30 years of NetApp. Last question. Yes. This is an incredible event. As the VP of product marketing, what is the one thing you want customers and partners to take away from this? I, you know, that's a great question. I only get one thing. Sorry. I got, got like 20. You got one. Okay, one. <laughs> I, I think they, I, we want them to recognize that NetApp, in addition to being the most secure storage on the planet and all the other things we've talked about, that NetApp is the one that's going to help them truly make their data AI ready, that's going to help them bring AI to their data, and that we can be an ally in doing that to really help revolutionize and deal with a lot of the challenges they're going to get and the pressure they're going to get to bring AI and deliver extreme business value immediately, that we're going to be their partner to be able to do that for them immediately and as simply as possible from anyone out there in the industry. I love it. Jeff Baxter, thanks so much for, for returning to theCUBE. Uh, thank you for having me. Always a lot of fun. Thanks. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Strache. Stay tuned for more of our coverage of NetApp Insight 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.